little bit of background. I guess uh, we have about a half an hour total, including Q&A, is that right? Yes, about a half hour. You can divide that up however you feel is best. Okay, great. I, hopefully my presentation part won't take more than half of that. Um, yeah, so the topic, the broad topic is um, exploring the relationship between um, gendered stereotypes about race um, and forms of nation and black men in particular. Um, so that's a lot of topics that I've just thrown at you. Um, and so what I'd like to do is sort of start with um, the empirical, let's see why did that not, here we go. Yeah, just briefly an introduction. I'm, I'm a psychology professor politics uh, at the University of Manchester. Um, I do direct the Manchester China Institute where I run a, a political psychology of a China and globalization lab. Um, and our lab um, was very much struck by a set of developments uh, this past year. Um, you all are far too familiar with the fact that 2020 uh, began quite poorly. Um, you know, along with COVID came the rise of, of uh, COVID um, racism, um, much associated with Donald Trump and you know, phrases like uh, the Chinese virus, Kung flu, uh, this sort of thing. Um, and did uh, the emerge quite a bit mask racism in the U.S. and then counter protests against that uh, last spring. Um, and yeah, it was quite clear that there was a large, large number of hate crimes against. Asian Americans uh, that went up considerably last year, especially in the spring. Um, these numbers are from a BBC report um, and it breaks down the different kinds of hate crimes and discrimination. And you can see that by far the largest were things like verbal harassment and shunning um, where actual physical assaults um, and, and uh, sort of tougher forms of aggression seem to be a smaller percentage. Uh, we could talk about why that might be later. Um, this was covered uh, quite widely in the British press, including BBC. Um, in fact, the BBC almost made it sound like uh, racism is a uniquely American issue. Um, you could probably tell from my accent that I'm American. <laughs> so I, I'm motivated to uh, fact that racism isn't a uniquely American phenomenon. Um, in fact, uh, in the UK, uh, there was also a rise of anti-Asian hate crimes uh, this past spring uh, that was uh, associated by many with coronavirus. Um, and of course, anti-East Asian hate crimes, I don't think should be necessarily separated from anti-Asian uh, discrimination and prejudice within the UK. After all, in, in the UK, there's a much larger population of South Asian um, Asians uh, from the former British colonies. Um, I enjoyed this uh, movie that came out a couple of years ago, Blinded by the Light, about a young South Asian man coping with a uh, teenager, coping with, with racism in his community within the UK. And that movie jived a lot with things that I've heard within the, the Chinese, commu Chinese communities in the UK about a lot of sort of opportunistic harassment that occurs towards um, Chinese takeaway owners and their families, um, where people, uh, uh, often white patrons, um, will harass uh, the Chinese owners of these takeaways. Uh, there seems to be a long history of that in the UK as well. Um, and of course, uh, you know, the, the whole coronavirus thing, focusing on East Asians um, also hit the UK. Here's just one example of a, as good an outcome you can hope for, which is a Singaporean uh, student, I believe, grad student in London who was physically attacked by a white man who yelled anti-Asian slurs. He was sentenced, so that's the good news. The bad news is why are you attacking someone just on the base of their race. Um, of course, I think all of you are familiar with how later in 2020, 
things got much worse in the US as the Black Lives Matter um, movement intensified um, in part because of a series of incidents in which the police um, used excessive force uh, against black men. Um, I can't breathe uh, became a new slogan for Black Lives Matter. Um, yeah, so the, the that really took off. Um, and it really struck me and in conversations with our lab, we really talked about talked about how well, the kinds of aggression and racial harassment, prejudice against blacks and Asian men seem to be uh, differing. And we were trying to understand that. Um, with the Black Lives Matter, there's quite a bit of evidence of uh, excessive use of force uh, by white policemen in predominantly black neighborhoods. Uh, there's a good piece in Nature Magazine on this. Um, and just as recently as yesterday, uh, I think this, at least I only saw this MSNBC clip uh, yesterday. Um, some of you may have seen that um, a number of little video clips have been circulating online of uh, black men assaulting elderly Asian uh, men. And I think actually killing one old man, basically you, you just see a black man rushing and pushing an Asian man. And that has led to a recent um, uh, sort of rallying among the Asian American community. And uh, one thing that um, a famous actor, Daniel Dyke, I think second from left here, uh, said in this MSBC interview really struck me is that it could be that we are seen as easy targets, um, said, said this actor. Um, and all of that ties in with some theories that our labs started about in, in response to that question. So the initial and broadest question is whether patterns of racial prejudice, discrimination, and aggression might differ across races. Um, are Asians more likely to be harassed, uh, whereas Blacks perhaps more likely to become victims of disproportionate uses of force? Um, and if so, could such differences be drif driven by differing racial stereotypes, as the actor sort of suggested, um, easy targets? So um, you sort of come up with, I guess the way I often work is in a dialectic between the empirics and the theory, uh, going back and forth. Um, so those are some questions that were raised by our observations of what was going on this past year in 2020 then we can look towards existing literatures to try to see whether they provide any insight into those questions. Um, and so the first place uh, we looked um, was social psychology. Um, I'm a political psychologist, but essentially what I do is applied social psychology, utilizing theories and methods from social psych to understand international affairs. Um, one of the core uh, theories of intergroup relations in social psych is social identity, which is concerned with how we form groups um, and mostly concerned with the boundaries between us or we and them. Um, the focus of this research though has long been uh, really on those borders. So often the, the content of the group, you know, what was the specific uh, group, you know, blacks or whites, um, uh, men or women, um, was less central to this literature. Um, so the contents were less central. Um, but then about uh, a decade or two ago, uh, Susan Fisk and her colleagues at Princeton um, started to look at the content of stereotypes more. And they theorized that most stereotypes are the product of evaluations of the warmth or intentions of another group and its competence or power, essentially. And they argued that those two evaluations would combine to produce a set of intergroup emotions and behavioral tendencies, um, action, action orientation. So Asians would tend to be stereotyped as smart, so high on competence, uh, but um, be seen as cool, untrustworthy, so therefore, tend to be the object of envious prejudice, um, whereas Blacks were often viewed as uh, not so smart, not so capable, but also viewed coolly and suspiciously, and therefore the object of, of contempt 
oftentimes. Um, another theory, less, less well known, but that has emerged over about the past uh, decade is something called the gendered theory of race, uh, which I only recently started learning more about. Um, basically, it argues that compared to the white stereotype, the Asian stereotype is more feminine and the black stereotype is more masculine. Um, one interesting uh, study within one of these seminal papers uh, was where they used um, US census data on interracial marriage. And they actually found that heterosexual white men had a romantic preference for Asians, uh, perhaps because the Asian stereotype is more feminine, um, whereas heterosexual white romantic preferences for preference for blacks over Asians, perhaps because blacks are stereotyped as more masculine. And that romantic preference was actually quantifiable in terms of the, the number of these different um, interracial marriage pairings that were revealed in the census data. And in fact, the imbalance was quite acute. Um, it was something like, you know, three quarters of all white men would choose Asians over blacks for their female partners, something like that. Um, another literature that kind of fits in here um, is intergroup emotions and action tendencies. So the, the idea of um, that assessments of relative strength might shape intergroup emotions and behavior so that when we perceive ourselves to be in a position of relative weakness, we will tend, uh, that will tend to activate avoidance emotion, fear. Um, and I'm speculating that that could lead to a defensive form of aggression, such as overreacting to disproportionate force against Blacks, um, whereas a relative strength assessments of relative strength in an intergroup setting might um, lead to intergroup approach emotions like anger, which could lead to opp opportunistic aggression, such as harassing Asians. Um, so these were some of the ideas that I had coming out of the intergroup emotion literature. And that then produces our core research questions, bringing together the empirics and the theory. Um, so do gendered stereotypes about race, shape the nature of racial prejudice, discrimination, and aggression against Asian and black men. And again, specifically might emasculating stereotypes about Asian men as low in physicality or masculinity um, encourage intergroup anger and opportunistic aggression against them, especially among whites. Um, whereas might a kind of hyper-masculine stereotype about black men as physically formidable uh, and or athletic, might that inflate fear or perceived threat, thereby increasing defensive aggression, uh, such as disproportionate uses of force as we have seen with BLM. So those are the, the core research questions. Um, we haven't begun the research, uh, but we have kind of a, a big picture idea for a set of studies to try to explore these questions from different angles. And the first is the most relevant um, to your workshop, um, which is to see if we can mine British and American crime data to look at whether there are uh, correlations between the race uh, of the victim. You know, are the victims um, Asian or black? Uh, if we don't have the measure of race in a data set, um, can we use uh, neighborhoods? Sorry about the typo, that should be proxy. So for example, two London neighborhoods, uh, one that is heavily uh, East Asian versus one that is heavily black. Um, could we look at the relative frequencies of different types of crime reported in the same, over the same period of time? Um, and we would be really interested in looking at uh, race-based um, discrimination, everything from prejudiced words um, such as race, uh, racist um, uh, discourse, basically, through discrimination in terms of hiring, um, uh, any kinds of behaviors, discriminatory behaviors, all the way up to uh, different types of aggression. So the key here will be finding crime data sets that really have a detailed breakdowns of the different types of crime, and ideally starting just at that level of prejudice. Um, so I'm hoping that as you all go through your workshop, um, one or more of you might keep your eyes open 
for us. And if, if you find some good data sets and you happen to see uh, some variables that will help us tap these two things that we want to correlate, um, please, please let us know. And I'll leave my email address in the comments section a little later. Um, a second study we want to do is we'll construct our own survey and we'll recruit participants in the US via an online uh, work bulletin board called MTurk. And we'll probably do separate recruitments for um, white Americans, black Americans and Asian Americans. And then they will go to an online survey hosted by Qualtrics. Um, and basically we will ask them survey questions about um, widely held stereotypes in their communities about the physical prowess and athleticism of different racial groups like blacks, whites, and Asians. And then we'll look at how that then potentially shapes what they think are the most common intergroup emotions as well as experiences of discrimination. Um, so that's something that we, we will do independently. Um, we're also planning to do a social media study. This is something that uh, I have not done before and our lab has not, but we are very lucky to have received funding from QSTEP to hire a summer intern. So if you are an undergraduate uh, with some experience in R uh, at Manchester and you're looking for two months at full pay, um, so we have money to pay someone you know, 40 hours a week uh, for up to two months um, to help us with this project on semi-automated uh, quantitative content analysis that would involve creating a dictionary of words related to physical prowess and athleticism, and then using it um, to, uh, after scraping uh, online social media like Reddit for discussions of Asians and Blacks um, to see whether we can't find similar correlations uh, from social media data. So yeah, this is my fancy uh, PowerPoint. <laughs> Paid two month summer internship through Manchester QSTEP. So if you know someone who's interested in discrimination and might be interested in a social media study, a big end social media study with semi-automated quantitative content analysis, please spread the word and it should be advertised through QSTEP shortly. And then finally, we'll, we'll do some uh, experimental studies as well. And those will mainly be using a social psychological paradigm. I could share some of those ideas with you as well, but really it's number one that is most relevant to um, your workshop. Uh, yeah, so I think that's it. Thank you very much.